Follow along with Guardians of the Wolves as we travel over 14,000 collective miles to Alaska to rescue four young wolf hybrids before it's too late. Four creatures unlike any others due to their parents being the most unlikely of couples, a wild gray wolf and a domestic pet dog. The trip started for me at two in the morning. Driving through the darkness to the airport, my stomach raw with nerves as I embarked on a rescue mission unlike any I've done before. My rescue partner, Mackenzie, and I were flying alone from our home cities, weighed down with crates and rescue equipment, and would meet in person for the first time on the ground in Anchorage. But before we get to that, let me introduce you to the organization behind this rescue and a little bit of the backstory on how this operation came to be. Hi, I'm Laurie Wynn. I'm the founder and CEO of Guardians of the Wolves, a nonprofit organization committed to wolf advocacy, conservation, education, rescue, as well as wolf dog education, advocacy, and rescue. We are a nonprofit organization and we are here to save the wolves. On January 17, 2023, I received an email from a state wildlife trooper in the state of Alaska. And he told me of an unusual pairing that happened in a very tiny village off of Homer, Alaska. This pairing was between a male wild wolf and a domestic dog. Alaska happens to be an illegal state for wolf hybrids and wolf dogs. Knowing that, we knew that we needed to act fast. So, without hesitation, I told the state wildlife trooper that we're in. We will do this rescue. By the time we landed, met up, and rented our van, Mackenzie and I had been traveling for about eight hours, but there was still a long drive ahead of us. Alaska is nothing if not beautiful. Even though many of the miles were through ice and slush, we were both glued to the scenery passing by. Strange frozen sand gorges, huge snow-capped mountains, brilliantly clear rivers, and the never-ending sunset that lingered over the ocean. We even saw some moose. Why does he walk like he has two big of shoes? So Thursday night we checked in with our state trooper um, who was going to provide the U.S. Fish and Wildlife boat for us to get us from Homer to the village. And he was looking at the weather and it wasn't looking like it was going to be in our favor. The seas were high, the waves were going to be high, and the winds were going to be high, and they considered it to be dangerous. We didn't have another chance to get over there. We had veterinary appointments lined up and um, then get back to Anchorage. So logistically, it was very difficult. Mackenzie and I got up before dawn the next morning to build crates in our hotel parking lot. We knew we needed to be ready at a moment's notice in case we had the perfect weather window to cross the bay. But as the sun rose, we got news from our law enforcement liaison that his boat captain was advising against the trip. We had to get to the village. So Friday morning at 4 a.m. Alaskan time, I was on the phone trying to find a way to get to the village because this was not going to stop us. So I found a water taxi and he was willing to take us. In fact, we ended up chartering the water taxi. Big shout out to Lance. And um, he picked up our team. Fish and Wildlife went with us. The Wildlife Trooper went with us. And um, we made it to the village with crashing seas and high winds. 
The trip across the bay was as rough as promised, but we felt safe in the capable hands of our charter captain, Lance. In fact, that boat ride was the only part of the whole trip that actually felt like recreation. Because from the moment we met our four beautiful new charges and their loving families, the gravity of this rescue mission and all that it entailed weighed heavily on us. Every rescue is important. Every animal our team has ever been a part of rescuing has mattered deeply to us. And to me, this rescue felt different. For the first time, we were rescuing well-loved and well-cared-for animals from families who wanted them and would have kept them for the rest of their lives. The weight of the loss these families and these wolf dogs were experiencing was a heavy one for us too. Their families had given them nothing but love, and because of that, they have nothing but love in their hearts. I know they would have cared for these creatures for the rest of their lives had the laws not prevented them. And I know that they will carry that love that they received in the first year of their life with them every day going forward, and will never forget their first families. The boat ride back was equally as rough and rocky, and two of the four wolf dogs got badly seasick. But we made it. The next step in their journey was to obtain health certificates so that they could leave the state and travel to their forever homes. This can be tricky in a place like Alaska where wolf dogs are illegal and treating wolf dogs can be problematic for veterinarians. Luckily, the wildlife biologist for U.S. Fish and Wildlife who had been working on this case was also married to a veterinarian in town who agreed to see the hybrids. After their appointments, we traveled four more hours back to Anchorage. And over the next few days, Mackenzie and I settled into our pet-friendly Airbnb in Anchorage. It was filled with wolf-themed decor, which felt like a sign we were in the right place. Babysitting our four hybrids around the clock became our full-time job. There's no rushing a wolf dog when it comes to building trust and building a relationship especially when they are stressed and grieving. By the time we finished their veterinary appointments and transported them more than 200 miles in crates in a van, three of the four needed time to decompress. I got one. <laughs> I got a video. The first to warm up to us was Doji. She's the smallest of the four, weighing only 68 pounds. She kind of looks like a little coyote. You like a coyote? More petite features. Her heart is one of pure sweetness, and even during the hardest and most frightening parts of the rescue, she offered nothing but love and gentleness to us. I think that's part of why I think she looks like a little coyote. You are the coyote. The second of the group to warm up to us was Big Boy Blue, weighing 123 pounds. He's one of the biggest wolf dogs I've ever seen, especially given that the pups were under a year of age at this time. Hey, get off her, buddy. <laughs> While being in a crate and being transported were hard on him, he quickly made friends with us and showed his goofy class clown type personality. Shortly after his brother and sister made friends with us, Gunnar decided to give us a second chance. He was more reserved than his little sister and big brother, but quickly showed his sweet side, <laughs> pressing against us and asking for cuddles. Do you need a squirt, 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 squirt. Looking into his eyes was a surreal sensation for me. While he didn't know it yet, and I could barely believe it was real, I knew that Gunnar was coming home with me. 
I knew, even though we were strangers, that we had a love story to write. I knew we would develop a deep and abiding bond. But until then, we just had to get through the trip home. Our fourth charge, Alarina, had the hardest time of all. She was born with an innate confidence and had developed quite a protective role among her siblings. For her, it had been extremely difficult to watch us load her frightened siblings into crates and take all four of them away from their families and homes. Alarina was not interested in making friends with us. Mackenzie and I worked to build rapport with her in a way that kept us safe and didn't create anxiety for her. Her mom had let us know that her favorite snack was peanut butter, so we began offering her peanut butter on a spoon through the bars of her crate. We were concerned that her behavior would cause the airlines to turn her away. Back home, the VP of Guardians of the Wolves talked with his longtime vet to design a sedative cocktail that could reduce her stress and hopefully reduce her reactive behavior. A modified version of this sedative cocktail was also going to be given to the others for 24 hours leading up to their flight home in an attempt to reduce as much stress as possible. This is the site of rescue you may not see often on social media, measuring out and crushing sedatives, hiding them in meatballs, and sedating four wolf hybrids so that they can travel almost 18,000 collective miles to their forever homes. Is it good? Your meatball. Your meatball. You know you want to eat it. It's right there. It's your meatball. Look at his eyes. He's so cute. Oh no. You ate it. Should I give him a salmon? Yeah. By the second day, the sedatives had done their job and Alarina had calmed down considerably. We discovered she really liked turkey lunch meat and eventually, after a long road of incremental improvement, she was even willing to take pieces of turkey from our hands. After what felt like an eternity, but also the blink of an eye, our time in Alaska with these creatures was over. We were thrilled to meet up with a local mother-daughter duo of wolf and wolf dog lovers who had offered to help us get all of the dogs to the airport and checked into their three separate flights in time so that Mackenzie and I could also make our flights. Gunnar was the first to get checked in to his flight, as he was actually flying home with me under my ticket as checked baggage. I've never flown with a dog in the cargo hold before. It's honestly not something I ever planned to do, but it was the only option to get these animals out of Alaska safely. So imagine my surprise when I discovered that TSA needed me to remove Gunnar from his crate so they can inspect it. This was an unexpected step in the process and one that could have proven to be overwhelming for him. I think this is the moment I really fell in love with Gunnar. For the first time, it was just us doing something novel and potentially scary that we hadn't prepared for or practiced. The truth is, he's a first-generation wolf hybrid whose father was a wild animal. He's not even a year old, and two days before had never left his remote and quiet fishing village. While he and I had come a long way in building trust with each other, I was still virtually a stranger to him. 
and yet he unloaded from his crate and stood calmly at my side, watching the hustle and bustle of activity around him with perfect composure. When it was time to load back into his crate, he went with very little fuss. And as I walked away and left his crate in the hands of the TSA agent, I could feel that he had a piece of my heart with him. Checking the other three into their flights was a level of stress that I will try to spare you. Suffice to say, we ran into issues with the size of Big Boy Blue's crate fitting through the jet doors. Then, as the cargo team tried to help us find a workaround, they read the health certificates closely enough to realize we were transporting wolf hybrids. If not for the animal-loving heart of the man in charge that night, Mackenzie and I would have had to figure out a way to swim home with them. I'm really only half joking. But in the end, they all made it onto their flights. Both Mackenzie and I made it onto our flights. And I can truly say that the tears of relief were flowing pretty freely when the flight attendant handed me this note letting me know that my friend Gunnar was safe on board the flight. All six of us flew through the night, like fingers stretching out from Alaska all across the country to the lower 48 below. Because finding qualified, loving homes for these creatures Homes with experience, proper containment, and the willingness to make a lifelong commitment sight unseen to one of these animals are few and far between. So Ray, our vice president, he worked diligently day and night as we received hundreds of applications that needed to be vetted and approved. Of all the applications, we only found five homes. Um, our vetting process is very strict because it's very traumatic to take these animals away from their families. We want to make sure that when they're going to their new homes, they will be there forever. Even though these animals are 50% wolf, we required people with experience with high content wolf dogs. As one parent being a wild wolf here, we just were very unsure of how this behavior was going to affect these dogs. Final destination of travel. Oh, Mr. Blue. The next stop, baby, forever home. <laughs> Thanks for being such a good boy. You caught the heart of everybody. Sweet baby, it's almost over. All this whole big journey is almost over for you, sweetness. Hi, hey, sweet angel. I'm so proud of you. You sure are a beautiful girl. You sure are pretty. So now all the animals are in their forever homes and I created a special Facebook group chat with all the adopters, which was one of the conditions of adopting so that the families can still be part of their lives through pictures and videos and see that they're doing well and get to know the adopters which was really important for the healing for the families because these are their family, these animals. So they're all thriving. Um, as of the end of this week, all will have been spayed and neutered. None of these animals will be bred and they're gonna live their best lives. And I'm excited to say that Blue, um, he has caught the heart of a lot of people. He is in the same, same state as Rosemary and myself. And um, we're going to do some great work together. So I really want to touch on the emotions of this rescue. And I really don't even like to call them a rescue because generally rescues are coming out of bad situations. These animals were not coming out of bad situations. They're political refugees. It's not the family's fault and it's not their fault that this happened. And um, it's such a unique pairing for a male wild wolf to breed with a domestic dog. Um, they did the right thing and they also did great by these animals because they're the sweetest things. So now I want to take a moment and just thank everybody that was involved with this rescue 
from our entire team at Guardians of the Wolves who worked diligently and hard to make this rescue a success. I want to thank the families for trusting us with their beloved animals. I want to thank United States Fish and Wildlife Service and the State of Alaska Wildlife Trooper for reaching out to us and trusting our organization with this incredible mission. And I want to thank all of you guys for your support, your donations, your love, um, sharing our story. And um, I want to thank the animals because at the end of the day, we are their guardians. We are guardians of the wolves. Thank you, everybody.